Hey guys, your boy Virtus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 survival horror game series. And in today's video we are going to be continuing on with the options screen. Having said that, when we go in and head over to the options, you can see we've created these buttons for resolution, view distance and also to sort of reset the save game. And what I want to do today specifically is pretty much set, set up and add the functionality for these buttons. So having said that, when I go ahead and press 1920 by 1080 it will change the resolution to that and the same goes for the view distance I want to increase that decrease that and I'm also going to be going over sort of scalability references to sort of add your own settings in because you're really not limited to just those ones there that I've got so having said that let's just go ahead and open up our main menu widget and sort of let's dive into the into the design into the graph view not design view sorry the yeah for design view and then let's go ahead and click one of the buttons each one of these buttons needs to have an on-clicked event, so we've got to go ahead and create one for each of these. So you can see when I sort of click the button, go to my details panel and go all the way down to the bottom where on-clicked is, create an on-clicked event, and then anything that we add over here will sort of add, you know, that little bit of script in there. And the way that we're going to be using all of this is through console commands. We can create console commands sort of, sort of to build around the kind of graphical settings that we want to go through. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a scalability reference made by Unreal Engine 4 to sort of allow you to change a bunch of the settings. So let me go ahead and show you this up on my screen. So just scrolling down here you can sort of see I can use console commands to change uh, things like view distance. So r.viewDistance um, and going down, down, down and I can just sort of change the values. Um, so I'm going to start off with something simple, I'm just going to show you how to set the resolution inside of Unreal Engine 4. So it's just set res, when you type in the resolution, uh, so that would be set res 1920 by 1080 because this is sort of that button. If you want to make the game full screen you just add a F to the end, if you want it to be windowed you just add a W to the end. But for now I'm just going to leave it at exactly that. And after we do that I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for the 1280 by 720 button. So once again, I'm going to create an on-clicked event, and it's just execute console command. And we're doing the same thing, set res, and this time it's going to be 1280 by 720 instead of 1920. And once again, W for windowed mode, F for full screen mode, and that will work just great. So, let me show you now how to actually use the... Uh, scalability reference guide to sort of change the view distance. This will also let you change things like texture quality and so on. I've just only created a couple of buttons but using the knowledge that I'm about to teach you, you guys will be able to do whatever you want with it. So I'm going to go ahead and use my view distance plus icon and we're pretty much going to tell that to set the view distance to uh, 2 or something like that. So let's go ahead and do that. Once again we are creating an on clicked event and it also is a console command so just go ahead and add that execute console command and let's see if we can find the exact console command that we need to put in here so view distance for this one it is going to be r dot view distance scale and then it sort of goes between zero to one or you can even um have it higher than that if you want to so if you want it to be super far high you know super far view distance you can do it um, so I'm going to go ahead and set that to 1 for now and then I'm also going to create one for view distance minus and I'm going to set that to 0 0.5. So pressing these two buttons the player can sort of switch between the view distance and obviously that's going to make an impact on performance as well. So I'm going to go ahead and press that and I am going to drag it out, execute, console command and this is going to be we've got to make sure it's not just one, we've got to add all of the R set uh, view distance as well, all of that, you can't forget that, you can't just type in one like I did there, so let's go ahead and add that, let's just find it again, and that is distance scale. so let's set that in there, so R dot da, 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 view distance scale try and get this it's all sometimes it is say, uh, case sensitive sometimes it isn't just try and get it in if you can and then I'm going to set this to 1 and we're going to do the same thing over here r dot view distance scale and we're going to set this to 0 0.5 so it's sort of half of the normal view distance so hopefully that should sort of increase the FPS for the player a little bit so I'm going to go ahead and compile that 
and once I've done that I'm gonna make sure I press play go into my options and sort of play play around with some of the buttons you're not gonna see them work at the moment as it's sort of in the normal viewport so if you do want to see them working you are gonna go ahead and have to create a standalone version of the game just get it open it can take a couple of minutes to load up so just give that a moment hopefully it doesn't take too long in the meantime, it's definitely worth, you know, looking at some of the other settings that you can play around with. Uh, the main ones that I would probably change if I were you guys would be things like the shadow quality. That is probably going to be the main sort of hit on the performance. And you can sort of see the differences here with these little examples that they've got of, you know, what changing it between 0 and 3 is going to be. So 0 is going to be on the left and there's sort of no shadows at all really. And on the right hand side, you know, all the objects are casting a shadow and it gets a little bit darker and it just makes it a little bit more realistic. Um, so, you know, there's loads of settings in here. The link for this scalability reference is going to be down in the description below. So you can go ahead and check that out if you want to. So, hopefully, let's see how it's doing. So it hasn't opened up just yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here and just sort of dive back into it in a second. Okay, so now that we've got this all loaded up, let's go ahead and try some of these buttons. Ignore all of the heads up display stuff on top of the screen, we'll fix that later on. But if we were to go into our option settings, and then we try and change the resolution, you can sort of see it's changing that. If I go ahead and press the 920 by 1080 button, it makes it full screen. If I press 1280 by 720, it makes it nice and small. You won't be able to see the changes on the view distance buttons, but they are changing and they are working just fine. So we've got all of our functionality for that setup now and it should be looking really really cool now the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna fix up the appearance on these buttons because you know they don't look too great when you click them the hover state and so on and so forth in terms of the functionality for the reset save game video that is something we're gonna be covering in the next video as it's a little bit more complicated to sort of round up in this video if we can so having said that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the details panel of each one of these buttons and I'm just gonna make sure that I change the hover image and I'm pretty much gonna set all of these to exactly the same the normal one for now making sure that I also change the margins as well because you know we don't want it being yeah so I'm just gonna quickly go through these you guys can fast forward you know further in through the video if that is something that you want to do it's entirely up to you you don't you guys don't have to watch this you know so sort of just bear with it I'm just gonna quickly change all the margins on all of these buttons first and then after that I can change all the images so we're gonna close our normal we're gonna set our hovered this one is gonna be view view distance plus view distance and then minus and I'm going to show you exactly how we're going to be setting up our uh, sort of hover effect. So instead of creating a second image for it, you know, sort of has like that green, orange, uh, not green, orange tint to it. You can just sort of use a little color fill to sort of do the same thing. So if we go ahead and choose one of our buttons, go to the hovered state. And then if we go all the way down to color and opacity, we can add a little bit of orange to it just like this. So turn that up there, press OK. And normally, just normally, this will add it in. If not, we might even have to do it with the background color option. Just try and see which one works for us. Uh, that doesn't seem to be doing anything. Usually it does. Tint, that is why. I am very, very tired. Okay, cool. So, tint. If we go over to this and we set the tint to this sort of color you can see over here now that it has changed it and that is working just fine i'm going to go ahead and change all of these settings back down to zero because we don't need it we don't need it so don't worry about changing the background color any of those it's all done in the tint so just go ahead and set up that same tint and just keep on setting it to the orange that you're after and you can sort of see the preview over here in the top right hand corner in the details panel you can see it goes slightly orange and that is looking good for us so if we go ahead and press play now uh, okay that's probably not the best idea to do it in this view but if I go ahead and press play go to options you can see our buttons have now sort of got that orange tint and what you guys need to do you sort of need to just go ahead and add that tint on all of these buttons and what I also want you to do is change the pressed image to you know sort of the default image as well so you gotta go through these one by one it can take a little bit of time but once you have done it it's gonna look really 
really great um so guys just just go ahead and fill that in i'm going to end off the video here once again guys thank you for watching make sure you share the video smack that like button and i will see you next time goodbye <laughs>